congratulations. Well, we are now going for gold. That's what we're celebrating here tonight. Of course, the pinnacle of journalism, the gold Walkley. The first gold was handed out 40 years ago. And as you can see from the list of gold winners now flashing up on the screen, it's a who's who of journalism. From the very first, Catherine Martin of the West Australian to the two-time prize winner, Ron Tanberg. And of course, a number of icons, some of whom are nominated here tonight. Kerry O'Brien, Chris Masters, Monica Attard, Peter Harcher, Pamela Williams, Hedley Thomas, Laurie Oakes, and Andrew Quilty, to name just a few from the list. That's a lot of gold glittering on that roll of champions. We're very proud of them. And now to present tonight's big award, please welcome one of the last Gold Walkley Award winners, from the age, Michael Bachelard. His co-winner, Kate Gerrity, couldn't be with us, with us tonight as she is currently on assignment. Please welcome Michael Bachelard. Thanks very much, Anton and Deb. Uh, I hope you're all enjoying the night. It's uh, getting close to the end now. It's genuinely true, I think, to say that everyone who was nominated for a Walkley tonight, successful or unsuccessful, is a winner. You are the very best journalists in Australia this year. So let's give a round of applause to all the nominees. But I'm here to present the gold Walkley to somebody who's already in possession of the silver. And if you're anything like I was last year, you're sitting out there celebrating your success and wondering with mild interest which of the other winners will be taking home the gold. By the way, Kate Geraghty, my co-winner, uh, the insanely talented Kate Geraghty, uh, was even more oblivious. When the announcement was made, she was crouched over her camera in a refugee camp in Bangladesh. There's an old saying from Zen Buddhism that goes like this. Before enlightenment, chopping wood, carrying water. After enlightenment, chopping wood, carrying water. And the same goes for winning gold here tonight. It's wonderful to win, and this one in particular is nice. It's pretty big bragging rights, and it comes with $10,000 of business class travel from Qantas and a shiny gold trophy. But tomorrow, there will be more stories to tell, more bad policies that need changing, more wrongdoing that needs exposing. In other words, there's always more public interest journalism to do, and doing that is where the real satisfaction lies. The Gold Walkley Award is supported by Apple News. Joining me on stage to present the award is editor of The Guardian and incoming chair of the Walkley Judging Board, Lenore Taylor. <laughs> and the 2018 Gold Walkley goes to Hedley Thomas and Slade Gibson. Congratulations, Hedley. Hedley joins a very exclusive club, having already won this honour in 2007. Only one other person has won the Gold Walkley twice, and that's the legendary cartoonist Ron Tanberg. The judges describe this podcast as a masterclass in investigative journalism. The impact of the teacher's pet has resonated around the world with 27 million downloads and counting. It's a great example of how journalism continues to evolve and how it can capture people's imagination and make a difference. We've also heard a rumour that the story is at the centre of a bidding war from Hollywood production companies, studios and networks. Who says journalism isn't glamorous? It's a remarkable achievement, especially for a bloke who says he didn't know how to operate the recording equipment when he started this project. So congratulations, Headley, and let's hear from you.
Thank you, Michael. Uh, it's true. My first interview, uh, I drove four hours west of Brisbane to a town called Miles to interview a former student of Chris Dawson. Her name was Kate, and she was very patient with me. Um, she put up with the fact that I didn't know how to actually record with this new device that I had bought, and uh, she reformatted it for me, and away we went. Um, so this has been uh, an accidental success story, uh, but I think largely because the story is so important. It's one that I um, was first riveted by 17 years ago, and I always wanted to revisit it. Um, Slade Gibson, who uh, was my um, co-partner with this production, he's this, the, the most amazing talent. Um, he's a, a brilliant musician. He, he was a, a guitarist for Savage Garden. He hadn't done a podcast before either, and when I asked him two months before the first episode, would he be able to help, he said, well, mate, let me listen to a few, you know, and I'll, I can tell you if, I, if I'm up to it. And he listened to a few over a few days. He said, yeah, I think I can do that. And he did all the music and he mixed and cut and he worked so hard. And uh, unfortunately, he can't be here tonight, but I'm incredibly grateful to Slade. I want to thank Lynn's family. To, to They have been so solid with me. I couldn't have done it without their total commitment and cooperation. Um, particularly Lynn's um, sister, Pat Jenkins, uh, Lynn's uh, brother, Greg Sims, his wife, Marilyn, uh, Lynn's daughter, Chanel. Uh, there are many others. Um, the former students of Cromer High School, and I can't mention them all, but I'm going to mention the Beverly uh, Staniforth, Michelle Walsh, uh, Robin Wheeler, Phil Webster. These people um, came on board and helped me understand the predatory behaviour on the, in those northern beaches schools. Um, this kind of enterprise can't happen without the support of uh, incredibly loyal and um, um, uh, supportive uh, colleagues. And at the top of that uh, list, uh, I put uh, Paul Whitaker. Uh, who was the editor-in-chief of The Australian until recently, now CEO of Sky. Um, Nicholas Gray, the CEO of The Australian, has been helping me with the uh, shortlisting of uh, some of the Hollywood parties who are interested in this story. Um, and, uh, of course, I've had enormous support from everyone at The Australian um, in the digital team, particularly Kel Southern, um, the Chief of Staff, Petra Rees, Deputy Editor, Gemma Jones and others. And uh, they've been fantastic. Um, Nick Adams Jasbar and, and Eric George have also been outstanding. My wife, Ruth Mathewson, um, tolerated a year in which um, she probably thought we might get divorced. Such was the, the level of obsession. Um, but we got through it and uh, she's been fantastic. And there's one final person. There are many other people I should thank, but I want to thank um, Katie Page because this journalism costs money. Um, lots of advertisers were reluctant initially to come on board. Um, podcast journalism is pretty new, and this is a very dark story. Uh, you know, it's a story involving murder and and uh, sexual abuse of, of schoolgirls, misogyny, and domestic violence. And uh, Katie Page, the CEO of Harvey Norman, she came on board and supported it right at the start. And I hope that that is a lead for lots of other advertisers who will support this, this journalism from now on. I have um, come um, so far this year with this story, thanks to Slade and everyone helping me, but I, um, I think that uh, none of it would be possible without the collegiate support of so many journalists in this room, people whose audio and stories that I've relied on to help create these podcasts and uh, they're still supporting me, and I'm immensely grateful. Um, as I said, um, it's, it's been an accidental success in many ways, but uh, uh, the storytelling, even for an old dog like me who looks much better on a podcast than television, it can work, and, and um, I think that this is what I want to do from now on. Um, thank you, everybody here.
Well done, Headley, but I do dispute your claim that it is an accidental success because the passion that you brought to this project shines through. There is no accident about it. It is quality journalism, and that's why it's won the gold. Well done.